next stop, Sullivan Street. Hey, are you Leo still, no? Yeah. Can I ask you something? How do you stay sane? Oh, let me show you. The thing about staying sane is it takes practice. Good morning, rise and shine, 6.50 a.m. And I'm on my way to my morning appointment because that is the only thing that has been keeping my sleep schedule intact. Let's go. We are at L for a jacked strength training workout class today. Oh my God, I just finished. I feel good. And I didn't push myself too hard today last week. I've been loving doing morning workout classes at the beginning of every week. I try to go like two or three times just because it gets me out of bed. If you're self-employed or just wanna wake up earlier, feel more energized, not only does it force me to wake up in the morning because if I miss my class, I'll literally get fined. It also makes me go to bed early because I want enough energy to not make a fool of myself in class. By the end of the day, I've done something for myself before I started work, breathed outside air, I just feel a lot more energized and actually sleepy enough to start unwinding, getting ready for bed. So it's been really helping with my sanity. And if you're looking for some affordable or free exercise options, you can also check out your local community centers. Like this one, they have free Tai Chi at 10 a.m. on Sundays and I've been coming to their ping pong which is 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 every Tuesday and Thursday. It's just been so wholesome. I feel like it's one of the best ways to get involved and it's really nice to hang out with people who aren't in their late 20s and having existential crisis. No shade to me and all my other friends. I think it's very important to spend time with our elders. They possess a wisdom and calmness that can only really be acquired from living the human experience. If you don't have time to volunteer at a community center, just go and play games and hang out and be a soul there. Okay, thank you. That's it? Here you go. You have any tools to do my journal. I try to do this right when I wake up and do three longhand stream of consciousness writing. If you don't know what to write at all, I think writing about at the beginning of the day three things you're excited for and at the end of the day three things you're grateful for is really nice. I'm trying to cultivate more gratitude in my life. If you want other ways to share your thoughts, there are also the more casual option, one of doing peer support where you talk to someone who is more of a listening ear without advice necessarily. I have one friend that <laughs> I call in my most dire times and She's offering one-to-one -one peer support sessions, which is pretty cool. I'll link that down below. If you're looking for something more professional, you can also look to therapy. I know a lot of my friends around me are currently therapy shopping. I feel like we're going through a lot of big changes in our lives at this stage. I just recommended a therapist to my friend the other day. When I was searching for therapy a few years back, I had no idea where to start. I actually tried out BetterHelp who is the sponsor of today's video. Thank you very much. The best thing about them is that all you have to do is fill out this very simple survey about what you're currently going through and what your ideal therapist looks like. And they will match someone from their platform of thousands and thousands of different therapists to suit you best. You can also switch completely for free, which is the nice part. If you're keen to try out therapy for the first time, I think this is definitely a considerable option and you can use my link for 10% off your first month.
When I'm back in Toronto, I try to visit home once a week to see my grandma and my mom. It's easy to get caught up in work and other things, but at the end of the day, the people around you are what matter the most. I want to see this cool yoga move that I learned in class last week. I didn't even know I could do it. Okay, you start off in like warrior two or whatever, and then you bind. This is my favorite library. I used to spend all of my summer breaks at the library when I was in elementary school and I just borrow piles and piles of books to read at home. I loved reading so much as a kid, so I'm trying to bring that back. Ooh. I definitely judge books by their cover. I'm sorry, but I just can't help it. In my last video, I talked about how I'm trying to unfry my dopamine levels. Today, I'm going to give you the exact recommendations. Starting off for the beginners, if you want to get back into reading but your attention span is already kind of short, I would highly recommend these Japanese short novels. This one is really bizarre but kind of funny and cute at the same time of a woman who works in a convenience store her whole life. This one is the second book in its series called Before the Coffee Gets Cold. It takes place in a cafe where time traveling occurs. I also really like browsing bookstores to get inspo for books to borrow. The truth and lies early medicine taught us about women's bodies and why it matters today. Written by a doctor going through a lot of the beliefs that Western medicine is built on, which is low-key ingrained in misogyny, and it's just very interesting. Nowadays, seeing a lot of my female friends have difficulty being taken seriously for their pain or menstrual issues. Getting into this book gives you a lot of perspective. I haven't read this one yet, but it was on display at the library and I usually flip through and read like one page of it. it gathers my interest, I'll pick it up. There was a quote in here about how fear is just excitement with nowhere to go. This is a story book, but the goal is to cultivate our curiosity so we can have more empathy and understanding for people who are different from us. I think that ultimately creates a more peaceful world. And then my last two recommendations are more for cultivating creativity. Women who run with the wolves, it really shifted my perspective on the value of stories. A deeply spiritual book, she honors what is tough, smart, and untamed in women. She venerates the female soul. A Guide to Living the Artist's Way. I actually haven't read the original Artist's Way book, but I really love this one. Also stumbled upon it at the library, and I liked it so much that I picked up my own copy. Another great thing about the library, you can just try out a book to see if it's worth buying, because books take up a lot of space, so I try to be very choosy about which ones I buy. I think this one helps to build confidence in your creative practice. Okay, that's pretty much it. In that book, The Artist's Way, they recommend taking one artist date once a week, and it can be very short, just a few hours or one hour. So, taking myself to the art gallery today. Let's see what they have. Whoa. This is so cool. This piece on screen right now is like an interactive sound piece. They have water in each pot. That's the sound that you're hearing. This piece is by Casey Adams called Nibby. Seven indigenous clay vessels, seven red willow wreaths, MIDI sound equipment. Seated in a circle on the floor of the gallery, the performers touch their bare feet to the ankles of the performer next to them, creating a circular circuit channeling the energy in each performer's body and the lake water contained within the pots to resonate sound. 
It's cool to see so many indigenous artists work in one place. They all center around very naturalistic elements, which I love. Watching this makes me want to wade into a river with my pants on too. No phone, nothing. Just go for a little walk, especially when you're feeling sleepy in the afternoon. I love air. Outside air. And I'll skip off into the distance. <laughs> I think she wants to do this one. <laughs> There's this other book that's really good too. Buy yourself the effing lilies. Good morning. This week I'm gonna be showing you how I stay sane. Okay, let's go. Get off my bed. Oh! <laughs> 